Um, before I get started, I want to pass along uh, my condolences to uh, the Holland family. Uh, I knew Coach Holland a little bit. Uh, I had one of my mentors is actually Jerry Wainwright. Uh, I worked there for him at UNC Wilmington for eight years. He worked for Coach Odom at Wake Forest uh, and used to talk glowingly of Coach Holland and a lot of the defensive things, principles that that we used. Uh, at UNCW were things that he talked about the Coach Holland coach from, from uh, his time in Virginia. So I uh, just want to, want to start with that um, and give credit to Virginia. I thought they played very well tonight. I thought both teams played exceptionally hard. Uh, they played a little better than we did. Uh, they're very good defensively and they're, they're hard to get a good rhythm against. I don't think we got into a good rhythm for a while in the game. We got better. Uh, uh, the longer the game went, um, I thought their two freshmen off the bench were very big in the game, and that was a the difference. Their bench played better than our bench a little bit. Um, and they were just a little bit tougher than we were on some certain plays that in a game like this where you're battling on the road in a difficult environment against a very good team that's very hungry, uh, we got to make a few more plays. We we got to make a few more driving plays. We got to get fouled a couple more times on some of those drives to the paint. Uh, and there are a couple offensive rebounds that they got that we've got to we got to hold them off uh, and eliminate some of those. But I thought our kids competed. Uh, I know it was ugly a little bit in the first half. Both teams were struggling to shoot, but I thought some of that was because the defense was good. The kids on both teams were really battling, and, and there weren't as many good shots. Uh, as teams would like. Questions? Yeah, Brad, uh, they struggled missing their first eight shots. The first five minutes was very ragged for them offensively. Was there something that you liked in your defense that then changed, or they just start knocking some down? Yeah, I mean, some of it is they just made some. Eventually, they're going to make a few. It's not like they weren't. There were some of the shots they were getting were good, good shots, but, um, you know, they're, they're hard to guard. They ran a lot more of their sides, movement, offense today, uh, and I think that probably – they ran that better than they ran their three game. Um, I think, you know, Dunn got them an easy one on a tip, full transition. They, they just, they finally settled in and made a couple good buckets. And, uh, you know, we weren't playing as well offensively. So, you know, it wasn't a little de demoralizing for our guys. Sometimes that's hard when you're struggling offensively to sustain your defense. I thought it was okay. Uh, down five at the half, you know, again, there were a couple of times they had us double figures. And I'm proud of our guys just hanging back in there. You know, got down 14 in the second half, and then all of a sudden you look up and it's five point game, and we have the ball. You know, we've stolen a game like this this year, and uh, you know, give our kids credit for continuing to battle and fight and believe and stick with it. And that's Hunter Tyson and PJ Hall. Those kids are the toughest nails and winners. They're they're why we're in the position we are. Brad, it seemed like um, Clark and Beekman were a little more aggressive sometimes than, than they can be on the on ball. Um, uh, yeah, maybe a little, but I think, you know, they, they pick up teams a lot. I think that's something they've done. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's, I don't know that it was a lot more. I think, you know, it probably was, we probably didn't do as much, you know, again, it's a quick turnaround Saturday to Tuesday, and there's so many defensive things because Tony's team is different than most teams offensively. There's just so much to try to get ready in a couple of days. It's hard. Uh, we probably didn't do enough that way to help our guys. Uh, that's on me. Uh, but the longer it went, I thought we did a better job of moving different guys onto the ball. We figured a couple of things out. We shot a good percentage in the second half. They were just, they were better too. Coach. Stay on Key here for a second. This yeah. actually will be his senior day next time Virginia comes out. What has it been like facing him over five years? Basically? You know, he's uh, a lot of us evaluate players, you know, neck down or whatnot, and he's he's unbelievable, like neck up. I mean, he is he's an unbelievable winner. You know, it's funny. I just showed one of my assistants today late in the game. They were trying to get the ball in bounds on the side against Notre Dame. Notre Dame switching and you know, he backs up to try to get the guy to guard him and then runs through the switch and the next guy starts to switch in the middle of it he does it again and he finds like they're they're trying to keep him from getting it but he gets it like he just 
He just does the things that, like, you don't coach that. He just makes winning plays um, on both ends of the floor. And obviously, Coach Bennett is tremendous because he had to wear with all the recruit a guy like that, but probably a lot of us wouldn't. And then in the middle of his freshman year, he decides that that dude's so good, we need him out here. So he's playing 20 minutes a game on a national championship team, making plays that won the national championship. And he's obviously not the primary guy, but man, is he making winning plays every time you turn around, and that's never changed. And, you know, glad he's graduated. <laughs> tell me what the only person to do. Brad, you guys have 21 wins, 13 wins in the conference. You're in the top four in the ACC. Is it a bit ridiculous to you that people are talking about you as, as a bubble or outside team? I mean, I get it. Like, the hard part is, the frustrating part is, in 18-19, we were 35 in the net, got left out, and it was, we had like a one and eight or something, quad one record, and I get it. And I think that was the year we had three number one seeds, though. So I kept trying to tell everybody, we're not playing quad one teams, we're playing like the super quad one teams. You know, it was like three of the top seeds in the, in the tournament. And so playing the number three team is good. You know, and so now we have some bad losses. I can explain a couple of them, right? You know, a couple of guys are hurt. A couple of guys, PJ Hall hasn't really been right until about January, but um, nobody cares. It's a really hard deal. Um, I certainly think we're tournament worthy. In terms of how we play and the nature of our team and all those kinds of things. I'm disappointed. I think I do think sometimes when Carolina and Duke are not in the top two or three in the league, that there's a national nar narrative that that means that it's, you know, if Pitt or Clemson or Virginia Tech or somebody like that is at the top of the league or in the top three, then the league must be down. Whatever those guys are, like let's match them up against them, right? Like I like North Carolina's at six right now. And let's see them play the sixth place team in the Big Ten and the Big 12. You want to talk about depth, right? So um, it's, it's a hard one. I get it. Uh, it's a really hard situation. And it's, yeah, it's a little bit frustrating because they're looking for reasons to keep you out. They will. Anybody on Zoom have anything before we finish up? Matt, it's Matt. Is, is there anything y'all could have done to get PJ a little more touches? And it seemed like some guys were struggling for three, or do you feel like they did a good job of trying to? I mean, yeah, I'd love to be able to say we could do that. And obviously, you know, Tony's trying to keep it out of there, and they're pressuring us and doing different things, maybe. Um, but give give Virginia credit. They, they guarded us well. They doubled him a couple times, kind of mixed their, their coverages. Uh, you know, I'm sure we could have maybe thrown it one or two more times in there, but didn't get it done. Anybody else? With the with the three point shooting, did you feel like you were getting decent looks and, and shots weren't falling? I think Hunter took eleven. Um, or, or did you feel like some of them were not maybe all of them were good. good? Not all of them were good. There were there were a few that those guys did a nice job. They pushed us out a little further. I, Hunter took a bad one at the end. That was a bad shot, bad panic shot. Um, you know, I know he wanted to play well and and uh, you know we wanted him aggressive. Uh, some of it is definitely Virginia's defense. I mean, they're elite for a reason, and they make it hard on you. And, uh, you know, they close out well. They contest well. You probably don't have quite as much time against them as you do against some other teams. And, you know, it's hard when you don't make a couple early. Um, it gets a little harder to make them later. All good? I, I think they were called uh, for 10 fouls for the game. Just, I know you said you needed to draw a few more. Did you feel like that was them not fouling and needing to draw more? Did, or did you feel like some of them were maybe missed? What, what was kind of your thoughts there? We, we have to make more plays. Like, we have to make more physical, tough plays. And whether that's create contact, get it. But we got to either finish. We got the ball in the paint some in some pretty good places, especially off the dribble, and didn't get enough out of that. And so whether we skip, score the basket or get a foul, you, you, to win a game like this, you better do that. We just weren't quite good enough. Brad, this is Larry. I'm sorry to keep you. Can you elaborate on the their on-ball defense from the guards? I mean, did it seem early that Chase and the other guys were almost shocked by yeah. how? I mean, their pressure was good. It was uh, a little disruptive. It got us a little bit out of our flow. Um, 
you know, we, we, I thought, again, I thought we made a couple of adjustments and ended up being okay after, but initially, you know, the crowd's hype, it's going and, and they did a nice job and got us pushed out. It took us a while to get, get our offense at a place where we could do more things. Again, give them credit. Brad, I know you've used different guards off the bench at different times this year. Just what do you think of Josh and, and Alex? It seemed like you went with those guys. Better, the, better, play, the longer they played, the better they did. I, I, you know, I thought that's – it's problematic. We've had some problems this year. We put guys in initially, and sometimes that first time they go in, they don't do very well. And then it's hard, right? When their guys go in, when McNeely and Dunn come in and they play better, their team gets better – Man, that's a huge shot in the arm. They're taking guys out who are good players, and they're taking out Vanderplas or Gardner and putting in Dunn, and then they're taking out Franklin or Beatman and putting in, you know, McNeely, and he gets some 12 points. And there's a wearing effect, right, on your guys, some of your starters that have to, like, sustain it. And then those guys come back in fresh, and then they're, they're running their sides where they're sprinting and cutting and moving, and you got to guard all that. Our bench has to play – at a high level uh, in a game like this to win because the margin to win at a place like Virginia against a top 15 team is small. So, you know, our guys got better the longer it went, but um, again, just not quite good enough in this environment against this quality opponent. All right. Thanks guys. Thank you, Brad.